Hey guys, Lizard Lee here for Full Moon Silhouette Day 2. It's from this book still, Bewitching Cross Stitch by Joan Elliott. Um, this is day one where I finished the cross stitch. So I'm going to attempt to make it into an ornament now. Uh, please have patience with me. I have been really, really, really sick lately. So, and I'm finally, I'm finally on the upswing. I think. I feel like I'm on the upswing at least. So, I'm going to attempt to do this. I don't know how well it's going to go. Or how not well it's going to go. Um, I have a bunch of beads now though. Some uh, box of beads. I think this is it. Is this the right one? I grabbed the wrong one. I, yes I did. I need this one. So, I've got these pretty ones. I really like those. And then I've just, I've got these. I've got these. I really like those. Those look so cool. They have lace around them. Or, like, it's metal, but it looks like it's been laced around. Like, it looks like whatever. These pretty blue ones, these pretty ones, these ones, and these ones. So, you know, a lot of blue. Because I know what I like. And that's what I do, so I buy what I like. <laughs> okay, so. So, the instructions say, trim the fabric to within 10 rows of the f finished embroidery. Cut a second piece of fabric the same size. So you know what? I'm going to do that. Oh, my tummy just grumbled. Just have to deal with that right now, tummy. It's not time to eat yet. <laughs> All right. Today is David's turn to talk about Pride and Prejudice starring Kiara Knightley. Did you already talk about it? In the previous video, I discussed uh, the Lizzie Bennet Diaries and gave a basic rundown of the book by Jane Austen, which I found, by the way, my little tiny version under 500 pages that, like, could fit into a man's pocket. <laughs> And I told David he can read it in a few hours, so... Kind of trivia. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was a movie mm -hmm. um, that we watched, and there was... Uh... Five sisters. Yeah, I'm trying to remember names here. I'm Ruby gonna... Bennett was the main character. Yep, thank you. So, fine. Okay. <laughs> you're just going to tell me everything anyways. Uh, oh, no. you're... Well, I mean, if I have the answer, why would I not give it to you? I was going to see if I can remember. Wait, so you didn't remember her name was my name? No, I remembered that. I was trying to remember the sisters' names. Oh, well, um, I didn't tell you any of those. Yeah, I'm aware. So, anyways, point is, uh, Lizzie is the smart daughter and, like, one of two good-looking daughters. Like, the others are, like, and this is Hollywood good-looking as far as I can tell, where, like, um, everyone is, of course, beautiful, but how dare these ones not be as drop-dead gorgeous as Kira Knightley. Like, in the book, Lizzie is described as fairly plain, and Jane is just beautiful. Yeah, and Jane is beautiful, and she's the pretty daughter, and this is in 1800s? 1800s, I think, yeah. Yeah, which is, like, not a great time to, to be, be a woman. woman. Yeah, um, but, you know, your purpose in life is, well, so the sort of cultural issue that this is set against is this father has five daughters, and they're basically dead weight in that kind of society, which is stupid, but that's how it was, because they can't really do anything except get married off, or otherwise, you know, you just have to pay and feed for them forever, and, you know, because women can't work, or... They can't inherit anything. Yeah, they can't either. inherit, that was the other thing. So his land's going to be passed off to his cousin, no, to their cousin, well, his nephew? Their cousin. Their cousin. Mr. Collins. Mr. Collins. Um, yes, so we'll get to him. Uh, so either way, lo and behold, there's some 
super fancy mansion in the area that has been finally populated and they're like oh my god there's rich people in town so we have to all go on down to uh basically oh fancily hoe it. themselves out am i wrong no i'm loving this okay this good Great, go go oh, come on rich people so <laughs> Like, that, that's I mean, not how Lizzie and no. Jane reacted, but that is that absolutely is the how the other sisters reaction. and the mom reacted. Yeah, and like, again, this is not a criticism of the characters. It is literally how the times were. It is a fairly reasonable reaction if oh, you yeah. were a woman at the time, because, yeah, it makes sense. Oh my god, I could get with a man who has money. Mm-hmm. I, I could not be destitute. Woo-hoo. Yeah, like, how, and I could, you know, not be, a, like, a problem for my family and make their lives better and all this stuff status in society and um judy dench but we'll get there so but not in cats never in cats oh my god don't even so, she's in cats now neither of mark. us have watched this movie and we're not gonna so i don't even know why he's mentioning it you said that very strongly when you know i'm not is. watching that freaking movie okay liz is and i can be you can watch it with this. robert you and robert hate yourselves i don't hate myself john could be involved in this poor decision that's fine i still don't hate myself right so anyways um getting back on track oh my god rich people so they go to a dance and a ball yeah. a ball yes they have a ball um i feel like it was not as fancy but i guess it was no it wasn't like a bar wasn't it i thought there was a mm-hmm. bar first no because he over she overhears him yeah and she's like under the stairs okay yeah you're right okay Anyways. Or, like, she's under something. Right, that's why I thought it was, like, a bar where she was in, like, the cellar. No, no. I, I remember she was under there, something. It's a big ballroom. There's a ballroom. There's a crap ton of people. There are a crap ton of people, because, like, <laughs> literally, if you were living then, you had no video games, so what else were you going to do? Um, and reading wasn't... Was reading widely taught? I don't... Think. Lizzie read all the time. Yeah, but I don't know... I thought that was, like... Women were supposed to read, or... I forget if that's... Well, know, according anyways. to Darcy, you have to be a well-read woman in order to be a good woman. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, point is, there's Darcy and Schmuck. What's Schmuck's name? Mr. Bingley. Mr. Bingley. Does he have a first name? Mm. Oh, shots fired. <laughs> mm. Okay, what's Mr. Darcy's first name? Not you Darcy. fight me? <laughs> Fitzwilliam. Fitzwilliam, really? Yes, or at least I'm pretty sure it was. Oh, okay. Bingley. They never say it. They they always it's. Let's see, Caroline Bingley and Charles Bingley. Charles. Okay, that sounds better. So Darcy and Charles. Um, they're the rich boys who have moved in. Do you realize you just said like, David and Kane? Yes. That's how you did that by yes. changing to his first name. I'm aware. Anyway, so Darcy and Charles. <laughs> Um, are the rich boys who move into town and so they're of course like they've got women quite literally to some extent throwing themselves at them because that's what women had to do back then confirmed Fitzwilliam is his first name nonetheless Charles Um, no no Darcy Fitzwilliam Darcy oh I wouldn't call myself that either if I was named Fitzwilliam oh god no (laughs) Darcy is way better but now we have kids we're not going to name our kid David, nor are we going to name our kid Fitzwilliam. If I have to pop a baby out of my body, <laughs> I get automatic veto on any names I want to veto. I feel like this is unfair, but okay. No, it's not. So, you want to carry a baby? <laughs> then you can have total veto power. <laughs> so, you can't, so it's not happening. Let's see. So anyways, <laughs> um, on to this rom-com. Uh, <laughs> is that comedic? Kinda, it's just yeah. more of a romance. It's a will they won't they. Um not very comedic. It kinda is. Uh not mm. a bunch, but like it's lighthearted, let me put it that way. There you go, that's better. It's definitely not a drama. So either way, um they go to the ball, uh she hears Darcy talking smack about her, Lizzie, that is. Mm-hmm. Um, because he's like, Yeah, she is plainer of the two because he was talking about Lizzie and Jane and Charles was like yo Jane hot though and he's like yeah yes you were dancing with the only handsome one in the room handsome yeah that was the term he used Uh uh-huh yeah quite a language we have (laughs) so the British had fun once it was awful um so it's all very prim and proper and 
she overhears him being critical of her because he's stating facts. No. Um, it's just like how the thing is. Um, and so, lo and behold, Lizzie is the one with the razor wit. And so she talks to him shortly thereafterwards and verbally rips him a new one essentially by saying like oh but i thought i wasn't the handsome one or something no like that. I don't no know was. so her mother is like oh yeah you know this boy wrote jane a poem and i thought there would be a proposal but there wasn't so lizzie's like yeah who'd think that poetry is the first thing that kills love right right and darcy's like well how else would you express aff affection and lizzie's just like dancing mm -hmm. and then she walks away yes it was amazing <laughs> right so anyway i summarized it way better than he did okay oh yeah so um in short uh they've got this sort of enemies to lovers thing going Jeez. absolutely i wonder love it um except the thing is is that like it's kind of obvious from step one that like darcy likes lizzie and he's just an idiot and awkward yeah He's uh I'm awkward but i'm rich and pretty so it's okay <laughs> uh, <laughs> being awkward isn't a problem i don't think especially that especially not that. if you're rich and pretty <laughs> well no i'm not rich or pretty and i'm awkward and i don't think no, it's that I big know, of a problem I know. i'm just poking fun at it um so he's obviously like a decent person uh, who is born into, like, you know, an amazing fortune, and does he have a job? Does he do things? I don't think so. No, I, because I'm like, I know we have soldier boys Like, he, he mans the estate. Like, he takes, he manages the yeah, estate. Yeah, and I have no idea if that's a real job or a British royalty job, or British land, or expensive. Yeah, I don't job. know. I don't, it doesn't matter. Point is, he's not hemorrhaging money <laughs> yeah work is a blow in him um but lizzie obviously lives a rougher life um because she poor in comparison um and they don't exactly live poorly for the time like the problem is the five daughter thing mm -hmm. it's, and no boys yeah no boys so um jane is chatting with charles and lizzie is cat fighting with darcy and then I don't remember the exact order of events here, but so I'm just going to cover them probably out of order. At some point, the cousin comes, Mr. Collins, and Mr. Collins is like, I am here to marry a daughter. Cause and I've... Jane has caught my eye. Yes, and the pretty one is pretty, and then Jane is like, nope. No, and... her mother is like, oh, oh no. Right. We're expecting a marriage proposal for her. But yeah. Lizzie, Lizzie's yeah. pretty too, isn't she? Mom's like, nope, that one's taken. And he goes, okay, Lizzie, how about you? And Lizzie's like, no, no, also no. And then he's like, okay, how about you, Charlotte? Well, no, he actually proposes to Lizzie yes. in the dining room. And she's like, no and she storms off and that's when the family yeah, busts yeah. through and laughs at him mm -hmm. and She's it just horrible. really really hurts and then he eventually finds charlotte mm -hmm. and charlotte says yes yeah um and lizzie gets angry with her yes because how dare you choose to live a life of relative happiness with someone who won't make you happy because he's a loser yeah and charlotte's just like i'm like what 29 30 mm -hmm. i'm a burden on my parents and i you know i don't have any prospects like this is the best that i can do yeah how dare you judge me and like mm -hmm. don't you dare judge me lizzie don't you dare judge it's me. it's not made super clear in the movie but it's still clear enough that like he's obviously not a bad guy he's a twerp to some extent but like yeah. he's a good at the very least like as far as marriages go especially for the era it's he's like not going to beat her and he's probably not going to hate her or m abuse like misabuse her you know he's she may not like be madly in love with him by the end of it but like they can get along and they'll both live happy lives you know like he actually fits exactly what i was talking about before you don't have to be pretty and rich it, it can be okay to be awkward because he's super awkward he's not very attractive he has an, enough money and but like he's just he's not good with uh propriety he was the one that just went up and shouted at darcy introducing himself and embarrassed himself but he didn't realize it like yeah. 
Yeah, he's so just awkward. He's just not, and well, and again, like, part of the thing is it's especially weird to see from the lens of modern age, where it's like, I don't know, this was written back then, something yeah. like that, yeah. So, Modern I mean, woman. I don't know how accurate it is and how devastating this would be, because, like, it might just be like, yeah, that's what happens. Like, you just get over it, because that's how society is. Like, oh, got laughed at by their family. Time to propose to the next one. Like, just a different time. And I don't know enough about that time to, like, intelligently comment. I just know how they portrayed it in the movie. Mm. About the 1813 book. is when it was published. Cool. So, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I don't know to what level this is dramatizing events and which ones of these are like yeah that looks like socially crushing to us today but it would have been like a whatever versus no it was horribly awkward back then too i mean i'm sure it was horribly awkward but it doesn't yeah. matter if one of them propose if he marries one of them or not yeah he's still getting that estate yes he is the only male heir in that family right exactly so it was kind of like he was trying to do a favor y'all are screwed you're not gonna you like if yeah. he gets this estate when your father dies where are you gonna go he can kick you out because you all just laughed at him yeah exactly so it's a whole thing um anyways i feel like there's another ball though oh yeah there is another ball because there's another ball and this time they dance and there's dancing because collins is there that's where the dancing occurs because he's trying to like flirt on lizzie before he proposes this is pre-proposal thinking yeah. <laughs> um and so he's trying to flirt with lizzie and lizzie's trying to not be the object of his affection because Lizzie don't want that and to be fair like it's not like a judgment of Collins but like you can literally tell like they're not going to be happy like Lizzie will resent him and they're not the kind of people who would get along and well yeah he was in the church and Lizzie just wanted to read and have yeah. someone to be witty with and yes. that they were never gonna yeah is this after the the weird walking session with the sister I think so Okay, because there's a weird walking session with the sister. Because Darcy's there. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's when Sorry. Jane gets sick. Because Jane gets sick. Because Mom is a freaking Machiavellian scientist <laughs> who decides that Jane needs to go walk to visit Charles. In without, Pemberley. In Pemberley. Um, and thus it rains because Mom knew it would rain. And so she gets sick and has to stay in Pemberley. I don't. Charles I'm, I'm thinking I'm wrong. I think Pemberley is uh, Darcy's. Yell about it in the comments if we're wrong. Anyway, so she goes and she stays there because she got sick, and thus this is the master plan to make sure that Jane gets to hang around Charles. And so Lizzie, of course, Netherfield. Has... What? Netherfield. Netherfield. She was sick in Netherfield. Netherfield. Mm -hmm. Don't get sick in Netherfield. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Or do. <laughs> You'll uh, get a marriage proposal like a year later. <laughs> it was kind of a close thing, but anyways... <laughs> So during this time, Lizzie goes over and she's like, yo, you're talking to Charles. I guess I'll talk with Darcy and his sister, who's kind of a jerk. Um, she has plans for him or something? I forget what the thing was. was there? Someone likes the sister. The sister somehow relates to the love. Are we child. talking about Charlotte Bingley? Yeah. Charlotte is in love with Darcy. Oh, right. Or not Charlotte, Charlotte. Um, um. Miss Bingley. What right, the heck is right. She's not Darcy's name? sister. She's uh, Charles's sister. Yes. Right. That's what I got. That's what I got it backwards. So yeah, Charles's sister likes Darcy too, because of course every woman does, because that's the point of Darcy. Um, Caroline. Um, Caroline Bingley is in love with Darcy. Yeah. So there's sort of this like caddy game going on where Lizzie and Darcy and Caroline. Well, Caroline and Lizzie are both like mentally eviscerating Darcy because he's awkward and talking to women and then they're also sort of kind of verbally sparring with each other while they literally walk around him in circles although he keeps his own up to a point oh, he um, he's not a completely awkward fool but he you know also doesn't know how to emote um or something uh I thought that that scene was perfection I, see. I loved it. So then there's this dance. The dance then happens at some point here. So she's trying to not get flirted on by Collins, but she's kind of sort of trying to flirt with Darcy. And in the meantime, the Charles and Jane thing is still playing. Isn't she? She was not flirting with Darcy. She dances with him. I mean, I okay, I guess if you consider that flirting, but she... Given that she said, how would you show emotional affection, and then she said dancing, and drop the mic and walk off... Yeah. I mean, if someone told me I was ugly, and then I said the best way to flirt is dancing, and then I dance with them, I would still not... She's flirting. Anyways. Okay. She, she doesn't want to be flirting, but she's kind of flirting. 
I, it's whatever. It's the usual, I, like, they yeah, have chemistry. It's verbal oh, sparring, yes. but yes, thank you. No, I don't know. what The scene you really liked during that was when she was dancing with Mr. Collins yes. and having a conversation with him while also having a conversation with Jane. Yes. <laughs> and it was... The... It was horrifying. <laughs> yeah. Um... So, either way, it's, like, awkward for Collins because it's sad, and you're like, oh, he's going to get destroyed here. And it's weird for Darcy because Darcy doesn't know how to human. <laughs> um, not even that. Like, he just doesn't know how Like, he's a perfectly normal person, but he's, like, not the kind of person who feels comfortable having, like, close emotions would be my guess. Like, he does not know how to romance. Um, romance? No. So, um, from there, Collins gets nuked. When does Darcy do the thing? Basically, I know this. In some order of events, <laughs> after or before the new king, Darcy does the confession scene. And, oh, right, 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 right. This is after the Jane bomb. So Jane and Charles don't work out because Charles gets advice from noted human expert Darcy <laughs> that Jane probably doesn't appear to like him. Because Charles is like, I'm not sure if she really likes me. And Darcy's like, yeah, I don't think she does either, because they're both really good at this. It's not that she doesn't like him, it's that he, he says, I think your feelings for her are stronger than you, her feelings yes. for you. Yes, whereas it's like, they're trying to find true love, not just, so, like, I can, you can understand that, especially in the era, the whole, like, well, of course I can marry a woman and end this, I'm freaking rich, but, like, gee, I'm freaking rich, I might as well see if I can try, like, I have the, I'm one of the few people who has the ability to marry for love, mm -hmm. so that's what they're looking for. And obviously it's very hard to find when every single woman is like, I'll laugh at everything for that much money! Like, Yeah, and then Jane and Elizabeth's sisters and their mother are those stereotypical yeah, well, women. Uh, well, especially the sisters and mother. I feel like mm -hmm. Jane is just... Yeah, no, it's not Jane and Lizzie. It's everyone Jane. else. No, I said except for Jane. Oh. It's Jane and Lizzie's sisters yes. and their mother. Are exactly that kind of thing. And again, it makes sense, but it's not what they're looking for. So basically, Darcy, noted human analyst, says, yeah, I don't think she likes you, bro. Or, like, it's not as there for you or whatever. Yeah. And so it's like, yeah, bro, you're right. We should go bro it out somewhere else. And they go to leave. But before they leave, Darcy decides that he wants to confess to Lizzie that he loves her. So he's like, yo, I love you. In the rain, by the way. In the rain. Continue. Yes, in the rain. You love the rain, so I feel like that's important. It's also you... London. It's it assumed so rain. It's romantic. Okay. <laughs> or, sorry, not London, Britain. It's assumed it it's... It's romantic. Why is rain romantic? Never mind. That's a separate issue. Because they both looked really hot. I really want to see a confession <laughs> in sweltering heat where they go, can we, can we go inside? This is too hot. <laughs> I, are, you need lemonade. I need a lemon. We'll continue this. I want to have this out. No, um... <laughs> So, uh, he's like, yo, I love you there, I said it, I found words, I did the thing, and she's like, oh really? And then she decides to destroy him, because he made Jane hurt, because she somehow knows that he's the reason that Jane and dude didn't work out. And rather than say, yo, you've got the wrong idea, Darcy goes, oh well then, oh right, I forgot, so Soldier Boy has shown up in this time, at some point in this timeline. And someone could animate this. <laughs> Soldier Boy die. is now a thing. So he, let me think about this, <laughs> he is Pretty Boy 2.0, and he also flirts with Lizzie, and Lizzie's like, oh my god, he's such a great guy! And he's wonderful because he is supposed to be wonderful, that's the whole point. He's a, so right, because officers, so it's hoeing part two, because all the girls are like, oh my god, officers, yeah! It's like, ah, uh, it's rich people, yay. So they go down to a ball or something. Right, there's other parts of this. It's coming back to me. So she talks to this officer dude who's heavily flirting with her and like, wow, he's kind of awesome. And then he's like, oh, Darcy, how dare you say that name? Darcy, Darcy, Darcy. And then says like, yes, Darcy ruined my life because his father loved me like a son and was going to leave everything to me. And then Darcy said, no, I hate you person whose name I can't remember. Oh who? Wickham. Wickham, yeah. Screw Wickham. <laughs> and so Lizzie's like, that evil Darcy, he called me less handsome. That sounds like him. So, <laughs> at this point, back to the rainfall confession, 
Darcy's putting his heart out here, and Lizzie's like, well, first of all, you done did done Wickham wrong, and then you blew up the Jane factor, so you know what? Screw you, Darcy! And so Darcy's like, oh, okay then, if that's your opinion, and leaves. And then they get really, really close, like they're about to kiss, and then Darcy does the right thing and backs off and walks away. Perfection. Apparently that's an important Yeah, you point. tell a man no, and he stops. That's amazing. I yes. assume that was a, that, that should be the norm. Anyways. It should be, but yes. it's not always. Okay, so point is, uh, Wickham. Yeah, Wickham. So, <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh I got there, though. I got there. We found him. Soldier Boy's in the picture. So, um, all right, hold on. I can do this. I can do this. From there. Darcy's like, right, because Darcy and Charles are leaving. That's why he does the I love you thing, because he's like, yo, by the way, we're bouncing. And she's like, and like she's like, yeah, I know, you've ruined everything, because Jane and Charles and Soldier Boy and blah, blah, blah. So, um, so they leave. And then, hold on. Right. <laughs> so, cousin Collins, Collins, cousin Collins, wouldn't shut up about his patron. He's got this patron who's like the patron, and it's like name dropping that you like wash sweat rags for basketball player who's popular. Um, I'm gonna go with Shaq, even though he's no longer playing. It's like, yes, you are around a famous person, but they probably can't tolerate you either. So, love you too, as she records me in two forms. Um, so Collins, Collins has been name dropping this patron. Catherine DeBerg. Who? Catherine DeBerg. Right, Jody Dench. So Jody Dench is... Judy Dench? I was close. Oh um, my god, you said her name right earlier. Judy Dench Dench is the aunt? Yes, the great aunt of Darcy. Because Darcy's like, oh, that patron? I know that patron. Oh, no, Darcy stubs the hell out of Collins <laughs> at the party because it's a beat on Collins party. I forgot about that. Because Colin's like, yo, I know you're on. He's like, who are you? Why are you near me? Who let you in this building? And then, ha, 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 Colin's eats it again. Roughly. That's More the... reason to hate Jane's family. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because they they're all terrible. So, except the dad. Because when Jane oh. turns down Colin's, the mom's like, how dare you? I will never talk to you again. And the dad's like, well, if you marry him, I'll never talk to you again. So screw you, woman. Because well, my daughter will be happy. <laughs> the line was... Unless you marry him, your mother will never speak to you again. If you marry him, I'll never speak to you again. And obviously Lizzie's his favorite, and she prefers him over her mother. So she's like, cool, I'm good. So basically the plot of the movie is screw that Collins guy. But anyways, he winds Aww. up with Charlotte, which is okay. Yeah, and I, she seems happy. They both seem happy in that relationship. Well, I don't think we see more of it after that, in the movie at least. In the movie, you see them in their house together. and you see Briefly, them but yeah. she's like happy that she's in a house. Like, they're happy enough. I wouldn't know if the relationship is happy so much as amicable. Like, you literally, like, it's not I mean, bad. You can start with Amicable and make it to love. Right, like, but we don't see that progression. All we see is she's happy in the house. Like, I got a house! Look at this! <laughs> yeah, and she has a room all to herself. This is where I keep my stuff! Room. I have a stuff room now! I put stuff in it and no one touches it. Yeah. <laughs> and I can bully Collins. It's easy. Watch! Oh Collins, God. come here! All right, go back, go back. Continue. So, yeah, continue. Let's, let's timeline this. So, we now have... I think most of the pieces, because Judy Dench is important to this, because she's the aunt, air quotes, and she's like real royalty-ish. Like none of these people are a speck on the monarchy, but nonetheless, it's Britain, so there's a lot of tears. And she's like eight steps above Darcy, is kind of implied or something, or like that's where he is, and he's a kid, but she's like the power in the family or whatever. She's old money. Um, so yeah, yeah, there you go. Somehow. The aunt and the uncle, the 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 Lizzie aunt and uncle travel, yes. and so Jane and Lizzie go with. No, wait, am I forgetting the part before that where the Wickham thing happens? There's a Wickham part. Oh Soldier God. boy, at some point here, <laughs> I can do this. He he fought. He turns out. There's like a time skip of like a year, 
and it's like, oh, I'm Lizzie, and I'm miserable, but it's okay, because I chose this, and I did the right thing. And then it's like, oh, a horrible thing has happened. Our dumb daughter has gone off and been with Wickham. Because, and they're, like, she is the dumb, like, they literally call her the dumb dot. Not literally, but, like, that is how everyone acts around her. She's, like, dropping handkerchiefs in front of soldiers to get them to pick it up. And, like, for all the wit and, like, Lizzie has, and for all the, like, naivete and sweetness that Jane has, this girl's just the dumb one. Like, not <laughs> stupid dumb, but, like, no, I read in Cosmo, this works. Watch. She the hoe. She the hoe. So, um, so she, it's like, and being a hoe back then is not okay. Um, it's a bad thing. So, she got something incredibly important. I'll get there. I've gotten everywhere else. I'll yeah. get there. I know I'm missing something. I see this cow. It moves. It's just not yet. It's not my cow. So, that's a spoiler for future conversations. So, from there, okay, I can do this. They, um, huh. So uh, somehow Wickham and what's what's the dumb one's name? Lydia. Lydia. Lydia goes with Wickham and Wickham absconds with her, sort of, kind of, and then it's like her virtue hath been stolen, so we must burn her, not literally, but like it's a scandal. Because, like they either have to get married or our whole family is ruined. Yeah, exactly. Because like, how darest you do anything like that? And so uh, they assume that the aunt and uncle, like, go to him and go, yo, she's dumb, but here's a bag of money <laughs> if you marry her. And he's like, fine, I'll marry her for a bag of money. And that's the resolution to Lydia, to my memory. Uh, so, <laughs> which is, like, a sad ending, because, like, she yeah, got really the bad is. ending. This is, like, the visual novel, when you replay it, you save Lydia instead. It, it's like this is why you should watch like the Lizzie Bennet diaries because Lydia gets a happy ending there. This is like yeah, the predecessor to Fate's Day Night, except you know it does all the plots. Anyways, so so let me see here. So where are we? So Lydia is done, and Wickham Wickham is done, and there's some other big thing I'm forgetting. But anyway, somehow they wind up at Judy Dench's place because the aunt and uncle are like traveling, and they're like, yeah, That's not Judy Dench's. Please, they go to Mr. Darcy. They go to Darcy's house, right. Cause, oh, right, right, right. Because when you're so rich, you're like, wow, I'm rich. I'm so rich. I'll let the normal people in. Because they can appreciate, because like, it, like, legitimately it's kind of a culture give back thing where like, wow, you've spent most of the money of this land on building this beautiful estate. The least you can let us do is walk our grubby feet through it. So it's like a museum where you get to go and look at the place that somebody theoretically lives in but it's not even their only house this is their summer home and it's bigger than like a military base and no one could ever possibly actually live there it's just 45 bedrooms which three of them are occupied by like groundskeepers and you know nannies and an army of people who put cloths on things when you leave so either way they're visiting the museum of mr darcy because it's there and they're there because reasons because aunt uncle reasons is my memory of this it's big it's i've heard it's beautiful we should go see it and mr darcy won't be there and it's open for viewing who says that the uncle the uncle the uncle's like yeah we should go because right because an important plot point is everyone knows that lizzie hates darcy it's like a big thing she's not quiet about it she goes home and she uses her verbal whip to eviscerate him to her family i'm sure and just explain how much of a loser darcy is and how terrible he, she, she the uncle and aunt knew nothing of this yeah but she tells her sisters and her father well, yeah, yeah. But, but she's not with them right now. She's with her aunt and uncle. Yeah, no, no, but for, for future things, it's important <laughs> that the audience understand in this timeline <laughs> that she's explained to her father and her mother how much she hates Darcy Cause so and cause she's and like the prototype Sundari. So from there, they they dar they go to Darcyland. And <laughs> it's like Disneyland, Darcyland. <laughs> And they're there. wandering Darcy. Oh, Darcy has a sister! Oh my God. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, because he did have a sister. I was right. It's just, it's not the hot sister who, who want, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not the one who fights with Lizzie, because that one likes Darcy, and that would be weird even for Brits. <laughs> so it's, his sister is weak and witty and fun. She's not weak. She's sick or something. <laughs> right? That's her first daughter! <laughs> 
<laughs> Catherine DeBert's daughter is Judy saying. Dench. Yes! She's the one who's supposed to marry Dorothy! Oh, yes. yeah! Yeah, that's a thing. I thought that, okay. Oh. Well, everyone's supposed to marry Darcy. I forgot. <laughs> right. Okay. Right, no, I forgot. So his aunt wants him to marry his nephew, niece? <laughs> Right, British. So, he, go marry your niece, Darcy. No. Um, but she's like sweet and she's sick and she's. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Um, and so they're wandering through Darcy land and all of a sudden, like, Lizzie spends like a literal time lapse, like Twilight style, staring at a statue of Darcy. And that's a bit much, but then she rounds a corner and hears piano playing, and oh my god, it's Darcy and Cute Girl. What's her name? Georgiana. Georgiana, yeah, because she's like basically mini Lizzie, because she's also witty and fun and sweet and smart. There you go. And so then, like, Darcy's like, oh my gosh, why are you here? And she's like, why are you here? And he's like, I live here. <laughs> why are you here? <laughs> And she's like, you don't always live here. You don't have to live here. Why are you here? I don't remember how that conversation went. Anyway, somehow it, it escalates to Darcy being like, well, you should talk to Judy Dench, because that'll be great. Sort of? This happens at some point. No, because no. she's like, you should play the piano. And she's like, no, I shouldn't play the piano. And she's like, you should play the... No, it's at a dinner. There's food involved. Okay, Darcy and her talk... Think? I like this movie for what it's worth. Um, I completely out of order. I've got it. I've got I've still forgotten Darcy's letter, which happened like 30 minutes ago. And you're oh, yeah. You write a soppy letter. That's what changes everything. Because Darcy, rather than telling the girl he loves in front of her, yo, I know you heard some things, but how about you hear my side? Let me get this straight. Decides to move away to Rich Mansion number 38 and then pen her a letter saying, by the by, Wickham's a jerk and I told my friend not to marry your sister because your sister is like not capable of saying I love you as much and I totally don't know what that's like obviously so I decided that she's clearly an emotionless robot and my friend shouldn't marry her you would have done the same in my shoes in fact that's practically what you've been arguing for and she's like oh that's so sweet and lovely how how come you didn't tell me so now she's like Moro That's why things suck, because it's a year later and she knows. I now remember. Yeah, so things suck, because she knows she screwed up, kind of. She can't admit that to herself, because she's prideful. It's a thing, like a theme. Someone tell the guys who made Game of Thrones. Anyways, um, so, so there was a note, and then they're like, we should travel? question mark yeah something like that so oh she knows wickham's terrible that's why it's like oh no the dumb one has run off with wickham no lydia lydia uh has run off with wickham and that's yeah and then does she know no she doesn't know yet yeah Lizzie so, has not told anyone but she doesn't know no about the wickham thing how that resolved is that in the note she knows that wickham tried to seduce georgiana yeah, right, right, right. And the only reason he didn't go through with marrying her is because he learned he was not going to get any money out of her. Right, yes, sorry, that's also, the, that, that's the explanation of the Wickham thing, is that Wickham was going to seduce Georgiana and then didn't go through the marriage and hurt, broke her heart because he realized he'd get no money out of it. And that's why Darcy's like, yo, by the way, totally unfair of you to call me out. Now, why he didn't just say this to her face well, in the he, rain. He said it in the, in the letter that he's not good at speaking. So he wanted to collect his thoughts in the letter. Yeah, like Jane. Oh my god. So, anyways, him and Jane really have a lot in common. Um, they both screwed up their relationship because they couldn't show their feelings. Anyways, um, so either way, I guess Lizzie has spent this year then telling everyone she hates Darcy, even though she knows now that he's innocent of... No, 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 no. She said it prior. She got the letter. And, and then she, she shot up about him. Yes. Yeah, rather than be like, so I was wrong. She just slandered his well, name. Yeah, he, he asked he her not told, to tell yeah, anybody. No, he, did, he did, yeah, he did. So anyways, um, back to Judy Dench. So somehow there's a dinner with the Denches, and so like... 
basically Darcy's like, stay for dinner, I think? Or is Judy dead? Jen, 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 Jen. No, Georgiana, right? Georgiana's a matchmaker. So she's like, yo, you have to stay because I said so and I'm witty too and I can outwit you because I'm young and cute and you have to listen to the young and cute one otherwise you're a jerk. And so she makes her stay, I think. That sounds right. And then they do a <laughs> the dinner. Dench dinner. What? <laughs> the Judy Dench dinner. Who's there? The Judy Dench dinner happened before the scene in the rain. That's when Lizzie learned that Darcy was the one who told uh, Bingley, hey, Jane doesn't like you the way you like her, bro. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. So the Judy Dench dinner was a while ago. <laughs> but the important point of the Judy Dench dinner is that, like, Judy Dench is like, uh, hey, Lizzie, you should play piano. And she's like, no, I'm really bad. She's like, you should play piano. She's like, no, I'm really bad. She's like, I am Judy Dench. You play are playing piano. me piano. And then she plays, and she's like, better than I'll ever freaking be. And I used to play piano, and I suck. So <laughs> screw you, Lizzie Bennet. Make me look bad. Um, and um, obviously she's not good enough for Judy Dench, though, because she's Judy Dench. She played, it, she's like in like a lot of Bond films. That's a lot of cred. Um, so... If I had learned, I would have been a great... That was what she said. Oh, never yeah. learned to play the piano. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know if there's anything else important about the Judy Dench dinner. I now have no idea what happens in Darcy Land. <laughs> I feel so like Georgiana's there. Is she there? She's there, right? Yeah! Okay, that is... You were you... right! Okay. Lizzie walks in on her playing piano, yeah. sees Darcy in her hug, and then she runs. Yeah, and she runs, because that's the normal reaction to seeing people hug, is fleeing at high speeds. So... Being a smaller woman, she doesn't get that far, though, because she can't go very high speed, and Darcy can catch her with his long legs and strong arms. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's how it was written. Uh, so he's like, ah, Lizzie, why are you here? We've done this joke. Um, and then they talk, question mark, about... Granted, it's Darcy, so they might not have talked, but I feel like there had to be a conversation. And she's like... So the letter, and he's like, so the letter. Right? Maybe? No? Okay. Likewise? I'm sorry, I didn't know you would be here. Oh no, it's okay. I only live here. <laughs> well, um, I should go. We're staying at such and such hotel. Oh, you're staying at such and such hotel? Right, Darcy the Creeper. Okay, <laughs> so, yeah, she's like, I've got to go. I'm staying at the Hilton or whatever. And Darcy's like, oh, the Hilton, huh? And pulls out the phone book. So <laughs> then it's the next day, day later, week later. I don't know, time passes. There is a passage of some sort of amount of time, correct? Correct? Yes, maybe? No, what I miss? Dinner. <laughs> dinner that night. They uh, have dinner at their hotel. Yeah. Darcy shows up. Yeah, Darcy the Creeper. So they're like, oh, we're eating dinner. And then Darcy's like, oh, why are you here eating dinner at the place you said you'd be at 20 minutes ago or however long? Time passed. It was like that an night. Hour. It was that night. Yeah, which makes it creepier. But. Well, I, I think. I don't remember. I know Darcy and the uncle ended up talking at one point, and Darcy was like, oh, hey, do you want to go fishing with me? Yeah, because the uncle had said, oh, I'd love to fish on that lake. And then Darcy's mm -hmm. like, do you want to fish on my lake? He's like, yeah, I want to fish <laughs> on the <your> lake. <laughs> and that's when Lizzie gets a letter. We already talked about a letter. <laughs> it's a different letter. It's a different letter. Hold on, I can do this. Is this the Lydia letter? <laughs> yes! Oh, this is, oh, oh, yeah, okay, this is how it gets involved. Right, okay, okay, okay. No, this is all that makes sense now. I've got this, guys. We've got it. So, the letter arrives then. It's from Dad or someone, question mark, doesn't matter. Point is, the dumb one has run, Lydia, Lydia has run off with Wickham. And they're like, oh, no, Wickham, the scum. And so they, they it's literally like the... I want to say Pirates of the Caribbean, but not even like, it's like, ah, oh, the beast has absconded with Belle! Like, rouse to the town, folks! We must find her! <laughs> like, the beast? Yeah, that's like the reaction! <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean! I, I got there. Okay, I, Same actress, though, I'll give you that. Yeah, uh, sure. Kara Knightley. Oh, yeah! Also named Elizabeth. She doesn't have much range, does she? So, anyway. Screw you, I love <laughs> I'm kidding. Kara I'm kidding. So, yeah, they're like, kill the beast, which is Wickham. 
Um, and so the whole group rabble rouses, and they go and they find Wickham, and then they do the thing I already no, no, no. Someone tracks. They do not all go. Not all, but many, some. Men. Yes. Men go. Men go. Well, that was assumed. It's the 1800s. <laughs> Women aren't allowed to do things other than play the piano for Judy Dench. So, and eat soup. There was soup eating at that dinner scene. I remember that. I was like, is she doing it right? Would Emily post approve? And then I got distracted. But so they, huh? <clears throat> the men go to look for Lydia. The previous referenced finding of Lydia in Wickham and like, yo Wickham, here's a bag of money. Stick around occurs. And so they assume that it must be the uncle. And I always thought that was weird. Because it's like, so Uncle's got money? We never really established that in the plot. But okay, Uncle's got enough money to bribe Wickham, who we know at this point is a greedy jerk. And like, to my understanding, my incredibly limited understanding of 1800s British dating etiquette, I know the woman would be ruined in this scenario. Does Wickham's reputation take a hit? No, of course not, because it's 1800s Britain. So, um, it's, that's, that happens. Yeah, so there, there, there's another letter from her uncle. That's when they realize, ah, uncle paid him off. Yeah. In order to marry Lydia. Yeah, Woo. yeah, because they get a letter saying he found her in some place at some time with him or found him. And, uh -huh. they, and yeah. brother, as long as you accept 100 pounds a year, he'll accept Lydia. Yeah, which, like, he yeah. He said, yeah. Hundred pounds a year. Pretty sure that's what it was. It was like really freaking cheap. I well, I mean, not back then. No. Yes, it was. I mean, in comparison to the amount of money that's being thrown around, but in comparison to like the average person's lifestyle, I feel like a hundred pounds a year is still a good chunk of. Literally, change. the father was like, "He has to be crazy if he accepts this amount. Your uncle must have given him so much money." Oh, oh, right. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I forgot about that. Too. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. So he's like, um. Yeah, Lydia's not worth that, which, great, the dumb one. Um, the ho. The ho. Um, so then... So that happened, then there was, surprise, I'm here, but then wait, Lydia. So Darcy doesn't get to, like, play his moves or something. Because remember, surprise, I'm at dinner, and oh, what are you doing here? But then Lydia problems is my memory of the order of events on this. <laughs> <laughs> that was at the hotel. Yeah, but we're past that now. Yes, why are you going backwards? Because that's where we last were. Oh, okay. Because I'm trying to remember what happens after that. Because, like, obviously I know where it ends. Yeah, they go oh, okay. so, so They get the... They I, go got, I, I, I can do that. No, I can't, but I'm going to mess they it up. They go back home. Yeah, I'm messing it up my way. You let me mess it up my way. They go back home because, like, right. Because then, rather than Darcy and... Lizzie getting to like talk, they have to go deal with the Lydia problem because Lydia ruins everything. So then it's like, darn, I missed my chance to maybe talk to Darcy again after I totally nuked everything in the past. Oh well, guess life sucks. I'll go be witty and a spinstress. And then she goes home and then she gets a letter from Darcy? No, she gets a letter from Lydia? No. The only letter is the one you just discussed from the uncle. Okay, there is no letter. Uh, the uncle letter happens then or later? Right then. Right then. Letter, uncle letter. Okay. So uncle letter happens at home. So she's home, like, yeah, Lydia's saved or something, slash with Wickham, which maybe they'll drive each other crazy. I don't know. Um, so then, then, then suddenly Judy Dench. This is my memory of events. Somehow Judy Dench is coming back into this. Mm -mm, There's a part yet. in between. I know, I'm getting there. Hold on. She tells Jane. There's a Jane thing. She's like, Jane, by the way, Darcy ruined everything. It's because you're not a motive. Um, and somehow that gets back to Charles. The point is the Charles and James Jane thing will get fixed here. I forget how. It's been a while since we watched this movie. Is it a letter? Bingley walks there with Darcy. Right. Why? Because they're in town? He proposes to Jane. Right, right, that's what it was. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, because that, that's what I forgot to mention, was that Lizzie tells Darcy when she sees him, like, yo, you're wrong about my sister. She loved Charles, and you're a jerk. How dare you? Oh, didn't she tell him that when she ripped him a new one in the yes, yes, Okay, so he's known that. 
Um, and he took his sweet time telling Charles, I don't know, but at some point he's like, yo, Charles, by the way, apparently I'm not a good judge of character and emotions. This girl likes you. And so Charles is like, really? Because she's freaking amazing. Let's go and back. I'm still in love with her. Yeah, like all these other models aren't as good. So we go back to... Probably one of my favorite scenes where the... Bennett sisters and mom are all in a room and they're just chatty and moving. Right, around. right. And then they see that Bingley and Darcy are heading over, and then they rush to hide their ribbons and yeah, everything yeah, and like, make it look like, like they're coming. We must look proper. <laughs> hide the ribbons, which is such a weird. I mean, it makes I sense. I it's hilarious. No, I, it, it is, but it also it's like especially to modern age it's like why are you hiding the ribbons that's is that a problem what's the problem with ribbons <laughs> what do ribbons mean are they witches so either way they hide the ribbons thank god and then bingley shows up and he proposes to jane and yay happy ending like it's only by the grace of god that between lizzie and darcy's awkwardness they managed to salvage this relationship so well, actually, I guess it's Jane's awkwardness in this case. But yeah, well, and Darcy's. Jane and Darcy screwed this up, but they managed to fix it through the power of rain. And now, because there was a rain scene. Anyway, okay. if he hadn't confessed his love in the rain, <laughs> she wouldn't have told him that he's an idiot. So either way, yeah, they are now the married. Because, um, of course, <laughs> she says yes. And my understanding is it just happens right there like that. There's nothing <laughs> else. Um and then somehow for some reason lizzie and darcy are still not a thing because this movie needed 20 more minutes or this book needs another chapter i'm not sure how it works in the book but there's a um there's a thing this is when the judy dench happens right this now is judy dench attack of the dench return of the dench yeah we'll right, go with I'm yes. taking it. We'll go with point yes. is is that judy dench has heard a rumor and she has hopped on her broomstick and flown all the way to the middle of wherever. And she walks into their house in all her regal glory. And they're like, we are not worthy or something. No, she takes her to her house. No, she goes into their house because it's like, oh my gosh, Judy Dench is in our house. Do you know how many Bond movies she was in? And they all like freak out and run because Judy Dench has that command power of like old i want to speak to lizzie and no one else yes get out of this room and of course they're behind the door but whatever so and then she's like you will not marry my son Ah, nephew whatever yeah i got there same thing eat this apple it's the wicked stepmother thing um so step on um aunt aunt whatever um and because you are you are not worthy of him, and how dare you, and blah, 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 blah. And Lizzie's like, he has never proposed to me. He has never given me intent to propose to me. The only time he showed emotion for me, I made sure to rip his heart out like a Mortal Kombat fatality. So that's not happening. Don't worry about it. I don't know why you're here. And she's like, well, fine, then. I will leave and gets back on her broomstick and flies away or something. I have never been treated so terribly. Yeah, because she's Judy Dench. How dare they? <laughs> um, so, lo and behold, Darcy has been traveling by postal service? I don't know. <laughs> he somehow doesn't beat Judy Dench here, which, like, she's Judy Dench. She's not spry. And he shows up. And he's like, by the way, the rumors were true that Judy Dench had heard. I'm here to propose to you. And Lizzie's like, I want to say yes. And then everyone's like, are you high? You hate him. And Dad's like, are you high? You hate him. You come in this room right now, young woman, and you explain to me why you're marrying this rich man and not your rich cousin. Because you had honor and dignity when it came to your cousin, but now suddenly this rich pretty boy proposes and you're willing to be miserable for the rest of your life. And she's like, no, I don't actually hate him. I was wrong. He's okay. We suck at emotions. I was prejudicial. I don't know where the prejudice comes in. I know it's like there, but I'd have to think about it and we're on a roll. So dad's like, oh my gosh, both my daughters get to be happy. And she's like, but you have more. He's like, whatever. (laughs) The ones that matter. And so the end ish no no right there's the scene you love where they're sitting on like one of darcy's mansions one through 20 probably the one we already saw there's like a fountain i think and there's candles and i feel like there's fruit is there fruit there should be fruit there's no fruit um what are they doing out there are they looking at the stars anyways so it's it's post 
post wedding? It's got to be post wedding. I assume it's honeymoon. I don't know. Post but wedding. But it's the Mrs. Darcy thing. And post wedding. And you can't call me dear. My mother calls me dear. My mother. My dad calls my mother dear when they cross. Thank you. Yes. Um. Because cross is a good word. Who came up with that cross? Anyways, and he's like, "What can I call you?" And Mrs. Darcy. And so he does the Mrs. Darcy line, and that's the other thing that Liz really likes about this movie. Nailed it. <laughs> Someone needs to animate this. There's I... no one with that kind of time and talent. I promise you. <laughs> if I try, <laughs> it'll go badly. <laughs> oh my god. If we could just clip each scene <laughs> as I ramble about it <laughs> and just jump through the timeline. <laughs> that was amazing. High five. High five. No, no, no. Good job. Good job. Good job. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. So. I think this is as good as it's going to get. Okay. Well, I've made an attempt. I don't know how to tie it off. So I might just leave it like this because my sister is also crafty and she might decide something she likes better. So, yeah. Crafty like a fox. She does like foxes. But this is a cat because she has two black cats now. So, I thought this would work out good. I have no idea how long this has taken me, so I need to get that now. <laughs> and that is the end of Full Moon Silhouette. I got three hours of footage, and there it is. I haven't decided how I'm going to do the ends. And I might just leave it like that, because my sister's also crafty, and might come up with something better. <laughs> That was my, I, I think that's my first time doing a tassel, and I kind of just guessed at it. I didn't think like, hey, I should Google how to make a tassel, but I mean, that's a tassel, so. Every day you're tasseling? Every day I'm tasseling. That does not, no, no. You did it though. I did, because you started it, and then I had to finish it, and then I was like, mm, no. So it took me three hours day two I don't know about day one I did whatever that there's a video for that <laughs> um, maximum effort yes yes I am very hungry so I'm just gonna just gonna end it there and I'm gonna go eat so like subscribe share comment all that jazz I will see you guys next video oh. that's a thing you said you have to have a thing I did a thing no. You have to have a thing. What are you talking about? You know, there's got to be an outro thing. And so you have your thing, and I added another thing. Okay, so you can do that as the outro for your YouTube channel. But I did it on yours. No. <laughs> okay, then that means every once in a while I have to pop into one of your videos and do my outro. What? No. No one wants that. I... Your channel is coding and video games. They don't want the ra the random cross stitch girl on there, oh. but they're gonna get her. That's what this is. It's just revenge at this point. 